Welcome to Save Our Sleep. Tizzy and the Save Our Sleep team believe it's every child's right to receive comfort, a parent's right to demonstrate love, and everyone's right to a full night of sleep. This podcast is not a medical or scientific volume, but a collection of tried and tested solutions and tips based on my many years of experience with babies and young children. Its main purpose is to help parents understand and avoid sleep problems in young babies and toddlers. We'd like to recognise the Wadawurrung people who are the traditional owners of this region which Tizzy and myself live and are recording today's podcast on. We acknowledge and respect that they have taken care of this land and water and raised children in this nation for over an extraordinary 70,000 years. The Save Our Sleep podcast is dedicated to helping you prevent and solve sleep problems while having some fun along the way. We endeavour to discuss all things family related, starting from preconception all the way through to an adult child leaving home and beyond. Some topics may be triggering. If you find this is the case, please reach out to your or your child's health nurse or general practitioner. Welcome to the Midweek Crack. Yes, our very first episode. So midweek crack is, the reason it's called crack is because crack is conversation that includes everyone in the room. And we want to involve our listeners. So we are going to have, our listeners have been giving us topics in the support group. And there's too many topics. There is. So we are going to now do a midweek crack where we do a little short episode in the middle of the week. On a Wednesday it'll come live and take in a topic. So this week's midweek topic is. Is from Heidi Elliott. Um, And she has asked, for a two-year-old at bedtime, a while back, she has been so clingy to a particular toy and rather than face a meltdown, we have let her take it to bed. And now it's become a sort of habit that she expects to pick a different toy each night to sleep along with her froggies. Is this an issue? So it's not safe to have toys in your cot under the age of two. Some SIDS researchers say once a child's over the age of two, you can. But I think before we discuss that, we should discuss comforters. Comforters! Oh, so many. They're awesome. Oh, I so love them. These are the They're Save so Our soft. Sleep comforters. If you're watching on YouTube, you will be able to see that I'm holding a Save Our Sleep Dizzy Dog. If you're not and you're listening, I'll try and describe it. So I'm holding a Dizzy Dog. You have to be very careful with the comforter. Mm-hmm. You need to make sure that the head is so small that if a child balances on it, they can't balance. So if a child rolls onto it, mm-hmm. they can't balance. If okay. they can balance on the head. Yep. I'm a little bit upset. There's a comforter called Riff Raff. Yes, I've seen this. And yep. I think that they're not the safest. Their heads are too big. And when you Google Save Our Sleep, up comes Riff Raff. It comes up Save Our Sleep. It's like as soon as you Google Save Our Sleep, the first mm. thing that comes up, if you Google Save Our Sleep, they've got a whole page. They are, it's a bit why cheeky. do people have to? ride on my coattails mm. why can't they create their own comforter give it their own name and not have to have save our sleep all over their website they've paid google for save our sleep yeah the ceo they've yeah. paid the search engines mm. they've put stuff about my book on there why get rid of it why yeah you are riding on my coattails yeah it's Go not away. something you've endorsed and riffraff comforters i do not believe are safe the heads are too big mm-hmm. So please do not use the Save Our Sleep bedding with a riffraff comforter. Is that wrong that I'm saying that? No, because it's your you know it's my your brand. advice. Yeah, that's and it. And they're associating themselves with my brand. So you need a small comforter head. Mm-hmm. Now, the knots, did you know that that feels like a nipple? No. So children are born with a... <laughs> children are born with a natural, like, it's... Their, their, their fingers are supposed to bounce, are supposed to bang the boob bang the mum's breast so you're supposed to bang the mum's breast and you're supposed and they're supposed to like stimulate the milk flow and often they'll play with the nipple to get the milk into the nipple which of course some people go oh no you shouldn't let your baby play with your nipples it's and people sexualize it it's not sexual it's animal kingdom it's Mm. children do that to get the milk like the crawl that they do after they're born if you let them naturally they crawl so if you feel the comforter it's a nipple yeah so did you ever know that before no so we make them really really carefully to feel like a nipple that's amazing so we've got like a little lump so they can yeah play with them so you've got a little lump in them yeah so maybe if daddy is wants to bit bored give him a comforter yeah mommy's going mommy's going to sleep yeah (laughs) 
<laughs> so and yes, right, and so many, and then eventually the child rubs it so much that the knot opens, and it becomes like a long thing for them to then mm. a sensory toy. So a lot of thoughts being put into the comforters. They have. So you need to make sure that your comforter is safe. Yep. A comforter is an aid that children use to good aid. So they use it as a sleep signal. Mm -hmm. They get to learn the smell. You put it down your top. You make it smell of you. Mm -hmm. You know all that. Yeah. But. A toy isn't the same because toys can have beans. Their heads can be too big. Kids yeah, their can eyes. On them. So it's a hard topic because she's saying, like, is it okay? Well, it depends whether your child's just about two or just two or two and a half, you mm -hmm. know. And it depends what your child sleeps like. Like if your child always sleeps in the same position in the back and they're not like rolling to their tummy, putting their bum in the air, then it probably is safe to use a toy in the cottage too. Explain to them one toy. You can choose your toy, you know, talk to them. They understand more than what we give them credit for. Talk to your child, yes. You can choose a toy to take in your cot with Froggy. Or if your child, if you're worried that your child isn't at the age where you feel confident that they'll be safe if they rolled onto their come toy, yeah. or if the toy's got beans, explain to them. You sleep with Fizzy Frog. So Heidi, explain to your child, you sleep with Fizzy Frog, Mizzy or Monkey, let's give it a different name, not a comforter name, but yep. this toy that you've chosen needs to watch you. It can sit on your side table. It yep. can sit. You can have it in the morning. You can have it after your sleep. If you think it's safe, yes, they can have a different toy every night. By the time they get to my children's age, six or seven, they're taking ten toys in the bed. It doesn't yep. matter. I used to travel in the back of the car, in the boot. We used to have, like you call them... Uh, we call them estates. You call them station wagons? Station wagons, yeah, yeah. And I would have 100 toys in there. And that's where I sat when we travelled from Dublin to France. I always sat in the boot of the car with all the toys. Now you couldn't because you're supposed to have a seatbelt. We do have seatbelts now, but yes. <laughs> so what else can we say about comforters? What else is mum asking about oh, throwing them out of the car? You were asking that. Yeah, you? yeah. Because I think um, I found the advice. I, is it in your toddler? It's in both books. It's I in think. both it's books. It's called Tricks of the Trade with Comforters. Because that was one, like you know, I had with mine and it was so great to just be able to open the book and go, oh, this is what I need to do. Well, but for our listeners, they might not know that that's I'll in our books. i tell you a funny story. Nathan came to me one day and said, oh, Darren's thrown the comfort out of the car. What would you do? And I said, you go to page XXX in the book and you read it. Stop <laughs> asking me, read the book. <laughs> so, and it was funny because it's like my child had read the book. Yeah. At nine or ten months old, yeah. they suddenly throw the comfort out of the I don't want to go to sleep. Boom. But then again, is it because they're not tired enough and do they need a routine change? Yeah, it becomes a little game, So what it? do you do? So they throw the comforter out of the cot and you say to them, it's sleep time. If you throw the comforter out of the cot, you're not going to have it for your sleep. Mm -hmm. You're not going to have your special friend for your sleep. And then when they throw the comforter out of the cot, don't run straight in and give it to them. Yeah. Wait a certain amount of time before you run in and give them the comforter so that they realise it's not coming back. They've got to realise it's not coming back. Yeah, and otherwise it's just a game. It's not it? like controlled crime. You don't do more time, more time, more time. You give no. them a certain amount of time, you go in, you give it back. The next time they throw it out, they settle without it. If they yell and scream the house down, it was their choice. Action is throwing the comforter out the second time. Mm -hmm. The second time, the first night they do it. If they do it the second night, that's not classed as the first time. Okay. Yeah. You say to them when you're putting them to bed. Well, you wouldn't say it to them because you're giving them the idea to yeah. throw it out. So the first time they go in their cot and they throw the comforter out, you go in and you give it to them and you say, after a few minutes, so they throw the comforter out, mm -hmm. you wait a couple of minutes, you go in, you give them the comforter back and you say, if you throw your special, whatever it's called, Mizzy, yeah. mine call them Mize, Dara call them Lammies. At one point, Killian called them Meerkats even though they were dizzy dogs. <laughs> if you throw such and such out, it's not coming back. You will have to settle without it. And then you follow through and they very quickly learn. Yeah. But if it happens the second night, so the first night they've thrown it out, you've wasted a couple of minutes, then you've gone in, you've given it back to them and said, if you throw it out again, it's gone. Mm -hmm. The next night, don't say it to them at bedtime because then you remind them of the game. Yeah. So, again, if they throw it out, you give them a few minutes, then you go in, you give it to them and say, oh, such and such fell out of the cot or such and such is on the floor. You know, if you if it comes out, if you throw it out again or if it falls out again, you're not getting it till after you've fallen asleep. Yeah. And then once they're asleep, you go in and you give it to them. OK, does that make sense? It does. Yeah. 
So what else can we ask about comforters? Now, it's very good to have backup comforters. Yes. Even if you've got two on rotation, they, you've got two on rotation, then one's in the wash one. Eventually, if you lose one, you've only got one. Then when you buy a third, they don't take to it. So mm. if you can afford it, you're better to start off with five or six on rotation. I've got a question for you. <laughs> so you and I both had children around about the same time. Yeah. So... I had Kieran and you had Emma. Emma about nine months after Kieran. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Emma and Kieran both had the original grey elephants. Mm -hmm. So not the original original, which had stripy ears and the cotton didn't last in the ears and we ended up discontinuing them. So you may see on different points of the website, you may see a grey elephant with stripy ears. The cotton didn't last in the ears, so we discontinued them. Okay. Yeah. So the next one after that was an all grey Elsie Elephant. If anyone's watching on YouTube, it's yeah. up on top of the Save Our Sleep sign. Okay? So the original ones had n very thin fur. They yes. did, yeah. Very thin fur. They were an asthma-friendly fur, but they were very thin. Mm. And a lot of people thought that they weren't as nice, even though it was a more expensive fabric. A lot of people contacted us and said, it's so thin. Yeah. So then we went back to a bit more Fluff. of a fluffy fur, still mm. asthma-friendly fabric. And both Kieran. And Emma rejected them. Mm. Kieran used to say that they were fat <laughs> and they felt fatter and he rejected them yep. because they, and they were fatter. They did feel fatter. Yep. Emma rejected them. But then roll forward to when, so when Kieran was 10 months old, even if I went in in the middle of the night and I put a fat one in, he would throw it out. Yep. Right. Even when he was two, he'd throw it out. He got to about two years and two months. He accepted it. It's, so do not, if you've bought a comforter off us and it's the, you think it's the same as what you bought, mm -hmm. most of the time it is, and you think your child doesn't like it because it smells different, keep washing it, keep putting it in there. Eventually they take to it. And I want to mm. know what's happened with Emma. Did Emma ever take to them? She's now changed colour, hasn't she? No. she so just she has changed. No, she just loves your products. <laughs> she, yes, but remember she wouldn't go for anything but the no, grey one. She, no, so, yeah, she's got the grey one and she has to have the smooth ones. So... Um, we found the same, same sort of thing. He, for Emma, she actually attached to a particular one that I ended up putting an E, like marking it with an E underneath, underneath. So I knew that was the favorite one. Um, but you know, as you said, like they lose them and things like that. And so we started with five and we've probably only got two originals well, left some of his. and we've had to steal some of Kieran's. <laughs> so, but over but time, I, yeah, you have, um, you know, sent Emma like a pink alley and she's, we call ours alley. So she's got a pink alley um, and pink alley now sleeps with her as well. And she's actually requested um, for me to get a Izzy. Which it's is funny how they go funny. elephants and they go pink elephant, blue elephant, gray elephant, all the elephants. And then they go, oh, hold on a minute. There's actually a pink. I like pink. There's a pink mm. bunny. Yeah. And then next she'll be requesting the dizzy dog. She might have to ask Santa for one. Well, Do you know Noah's, lots of people? Noah's got the dizzy dog. Lots of She might ask for a pink one. Lots of mm. people ask. Don't let us see any photos of the pink one. <laughs> lots of people ask Santa for them. Lots of children. Mm. Santa comes and some people have gotten the habit where Santa comes and takes the old ones and puts takes them away and cleans them and brings yeah. back new ones the following Christmas. Well. That funnily enough, Emma actually did ask for Christmas <laughs> for, for comforters. She wanted a blue and a pink alley. Why didn't she get them? Well, I didn't think I thought they would just go to waste. But then she uh, remember she actually caught like sent you a video thing yes. asking for a pink alley. And I said she thinks I'm the comforter keeper. <laughs> she does. You are the comforter yes. keeper. So yes, very important to have them on rotation. Now, so now what's the difference between a dummy, a comforter, and a thing? Well, with mm. a dummy. They need it at night. They need you. Well, you can't leave them with a dummy overnight. Mm -hmm. Dummies are unsafe to be. You shouldn't leave a dummy with a baby overnight mm -hmm. because they can bite the end off or they can choke on them and so on. But with a dummy, when they suck on a dummy, mm -hmm. they digestive system works faster. Yep. They become hungrier and you need to go in. They drop it. They lose it. You've got to go in and you've got to give it back. But with a comforter, they can normally find it themselves. Yeah. So you, it's a good aid. A comforter is a good sleep aid. Oh, they magnificent and they're really calming like you especially when you, you might think when you put them in with the wrap you know and they snuggle into the side that they're not that fond of them you see that for me I felt that we saw the true love of the comforters when we unwrapped and they could finally get it and you know hold it and touch it and like 
the comforter love, like you really saw how much they loved those comforters and attached you to often them. often don't see the love till they're about 11 or 12 months mm. old, 10, 11, 12 Well, that's months. when we recommend for unwrapping. When you suddenly see them going into the room and touching them and wanting them. And, and the woman who did my children's immunizations recently, she did flu jabs for Kiran. She said she'll all, the nurse, not woman, the lovely nurse in Ocean Grove, she said, she always remembers when we went for immunizations, I'd bring the comforters and I would we'd do the immunization. I'd do the finish signal. So mm-hmm. I'd do a finish signal with my hand, hand in the comforter and they'd instantly stop crying. Yeah. And she was like, it was, you know, you'd say finished, finished and do the sign, hand in the comforter and they knew it was over and it was really, really good. Mm. Well, that's it for today's little crack of the week. Awesome. So now, so who, this was Heidi. Was it Heidi's question? Whose question was this? Yes, Heidi this? Elliott. Heidi Elliott. So Heidi gets a $20 gift voucher. Awesome. If she finds the screen for this on the Instagram account and puts underneath that she is Heidi, we will contact her and she will get a $20 gift voucher to spend at Save Our Sleep. So we are going to be talking next week about the village. Yes. So our next podcast is about where the village has gone. So on Sunday, we will be chatting to you about where our village has gone. So we look forward to chatting to you on Sunday about... How our village has disappeared. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Until everyone. Then. Bye. You have been listening to the Save Our Sleep podcast, brought to you by the International Baby Whisperer Proprietary Limited. You will find more information about the Save Our Sleep philosophy, products, support, and how to watch the mini clips that accompany this podcast at saveoursleep.com. You may find the Save Our Sleep social media accounts by searching Tizzy Hall on Instagram, Facebook or Twitter. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel for all my how-to videos and to watch the podcasts. If you enjoyed the podcast, please rate it and share it with your friends. I would like to thank Kylie Zabo for co-hosting Fundamental Studios Geelong for their amazing recording studio. Nick Dale at Primer Films for this production. And most of all, you, the listeners. Without you, there would be no reason for this podcast. Please enjoy, stay safe, and Kylie and I will look forward to chatting with you again soon.